Hey guys, TJ Schwartz here. Welcome back to the Schwartz Knives shop. Today I'm machining bevels on a little utility fixed blade that I make called the Scalpel Plus. I'm gonna give you an up close look at the fixturing and the workflow and yeah, how I do it. So this is an unfinished Scalpel Plus. It's been heat treated and sandblasted. It hasn't been tumbled and sharpened, but I just wanted to show you the bevel. So you can see it's a flat grind. That's the full height of the bevel. The plunge has a 45 degree angle in it, which I thought was a kind of a cool design feature that I integrated. And yeah, these bevels are fully machined on a CNC and it took a little bit of creativity to get this to work right. So I have the fixture over here. Basically, when I came up with the idea for this knife and this bevel, I wanted to come up with a fixture where I could hold this blade at an angle with the edge up oriented to the spindle so that this surface would machine as if it was flat. <clears throat> so in other words, I'm not ramping or doing any angle creation with the machine itself. It's the fixture that holds at an angle. Uh, this works really good. It really only works perfectly if the edge of the blade is straight. So that's part of what went into the design of this knife. Um, if, the, if the edge, even if it's a flat grind, if the edge bellies up, that's actually a curved surface, whereas this truly is a flat surface. So this is a fixture I built a while back. It's not really my favorite fixture. It works pretty well. Um, in the future, I might remake this. I might actually do it with like a Pearson palette or something. But it did take a little bit of engineering to get it to work, and I think it's pretty neat. So. I machined a block of aluminum, 6061, uh, nice and square and true. And then what I did was I held it on end like this. And you can see how I machined a ramp into the end, just like this oriented the machine. And then I flipped it and did the same thing on the other side. While also you can see on this corner, hopefully you can see that I machined a little rectangle when I did that end up operation. And the reason for doing that is when I put this in the vise, and I'll show you that. So you can see how this thing just drops into a vise and assumes the angle of those ramps front and back, giving me the sloped surface. And the power of that is that if I wanna machine the blades, I do this. If I needed to make an adjustment to the fixture itself, I can put it in the vise in a step jaw that holds it back to 90 degrees and I could change, add holes, move things around and then drop it back into the vise to regain the angle. So it's a pretty clean little setup. But the reason for this little rectangle here is the biggest challenge I had when I designed this was how, I'm gonna, how am I gonna pick up a coordinate system off this when you have a sloped surface, it's not really probable. Um, and so that little 90 degree corner is generated and is a point I can pick up as a uh, work offset. So I'm going to show you on the cam screen on the computer what that means. So hopefully you can see this, but this is the fixture on the screen here. The origin for this whole operation, the work offset, is on the corner of that little boss right there. And I can actually probe that top of that flat surface and gain an XY plane um, for the actual location of this part. If I left the corner just at an angle like this, there's nowhere to probe on this part that would give you the Z height of the actual part. And so that was a, a cool little trick that I'm definitely gonna use in the future. So another couple things that I engineered into this fixture is, well, there's these G10 clamps. So these simply hold the knife down um, so you can imagine the knife simply laying on the fixture and being held down um, like the, uh, the knife would go in like this. It goes against these hardened pins that are inserted. And the reason it's kind of hard to move around is this fixture also has magnets. So there's a magnet here that's machined flush. So the op one, obviously it's your first bevel. So the bottom is flat. So a fresh part would go on there. And then on op two, I wanted support both holding the blade up and holding it down and clamping it essentially, but without actually having a clamp out of the tip. So this little magnet here is actually at an angle. So this magnet 
I stuck, I machined the first side of a blade. I stuck the magnet to the blade. I put a little JB weld in this hole. And then I placed this in the, the fixture perfectly and let the JB weld actually cure. And so when I took the blade off, the magnet was deposited and fixed right where the reverse angle of this is. So I didn't have to machine a, another, a third angle to be able to put that in there. So that worked really well. Um, yeah, it's been a good fixture. There's a few little nuances. There's a lot of screws you have to take out to get the knives off. Uh, some kind of pit bull clamp, or there, there, there's probably a more efficient way to put the blades on and off. One of the things is I don't have holes through this to actually mount it down. If, if it was more conventional of a fixed blade and it had holes, that would be the better way to mount it down. But in concept, the fixture works really well and I'm super happy with it. And actually, once you get your head around the angles and stuff, it's actually not that hard to make either. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in the vise and I have never run this fixture on the sile. This was made and first used on the Tormach. I wanna run this thing on the sile and see how these bevels machine. So the fixture is in the vise. This is the condition of the blade when it goes in. This is not a hardened blade, this is pre-heat treat. And I've machined it op one and op two front and back. So the knife gets placed on here and you can see the magnet sucked it up already. Um, it's hard to do with one hand, but I have to make sure the magnet hasn't drawn it away from the pin, so I'll position it, clamp it down, and then I'm gonna go through picking up the work coordinate. By the way, this is the tool and holder I'm using. There's two of these, a rougher and a finisher for the bevels. This is from Mari Tool and made by HTC Tool. It's a 5 16 end mill that has a corner chamfer, 60 thou corner chamfer. So it's flat on bottom for doing the bevel and then the corner chamfer is what leaves the chamfer in the plunge area. It's also a stronger tool than a 90 degree tool because of those corner chamfers. So I've got the Heimer zeroed on that little surface back there. And I'm gonna set my work coordinates. I use G56 and 57 because 56 is this side, 57 is the second side bevel. They share the same work coordinate origin, but because they're separate, I can adjust them independently if one side's too shallow for whatever reason, if there's any tolerance issues or whatever. So I just have to fill these values in, um, keep probing that little corner, and then we'll be ready to give this a try. So I've got the machine coordinates set. You can see they're both the same. I did bump the Z up five thou. So in other words, it's gonna, should be machining kind of shallow because the Z is really the main uh, issue here. If it's too deep or too shallow, uh, I'll get different, different outcomes. And so I usually start pretty shallow and then walk it down a few thou or a few tenths at a time until it's perfect. So, yeah, I've only got the one in there. Obviously, I have to one run one before it can be flipped to op two. This is also a scrap part already, so if this goes south, that'll be okay. Um, I'm gonna turn my feed rate and rapid knob way down. The rapids on this thing are pretty scary, so there's no reason to overdo it on that if you're just testing something out. I've got the code loaded up here. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try. Now for a finishing pass, it's really, really light. And side one's done, so I'll probably go ahead and stop the machine. So that turned out absolutely perfect. It feels like a piece of glass. You can see the, the step overs because the actual nose of the tool that's actually flat is not very big because of those corner chamfers. So there's a number of step overs, but uh, there's no feeling that they're there it's just like a mirror so so far so good i did notice i want this bevel to actually meet the top of the knife where that chamfer is and i'm not deep enough like i said i had backed it off so i'm going to walk this down 
until that meets and then I'm going to pull it out and show you. So I stepped this guy down a couple of times to get the full flat effect of the grind. One of the things I'm looking for is that bevel meeting that chamfer right at a point. So you can see right there at the tip of my thumb. Turned out really nice. I think the increased coolant volume of the flood coolant is helping the surface finish on the sile versus the Tormach because the magnet attracts chips out here near the tip, which has always been a problem, and the coolant is stronger and is pushing more of that away. But so far, so good. Now to throw it on for the backside, I'm going to load up two knives because I'm starting to trust this now, and we'll see how she looks. That's how it looks fully loaded. So this is going to run both operations in sequence. Oop, got to put it in auto mode first. You can see that huge amount of coolant volume going across that blade. That's exactly what I want. I don't love the sound of this tool. Like I said, it's not a brand new tool. Might have to change that out. It's a rougher, but you don't want extra stress and heat or problems. So here it is, just pulled off the machine. Again, you can see the step over. It looks kind of, it looks like it wouldn't finish out, but I can tell you it's like a mirror finish. That small nose on the tool leaves that ribbed look, but that is what I'm looking for. The backside came in nice, but I did get one squirrel mark from a chip. The downside of using magnets is the obvious problem of chip clearing. I've thought about pulling the magnets out to see if I really, really need them, but an occasional swirl mark is something I've been able to get removed really easily. So I'm going to start running them and see how my chip clearing does, see how my tool life does, but yeah, that's how I do it. A flat grind on this little knife and it's been a good it's a good solution so far there's a lot of ways to do this kind of bevel and here's where i'm at so once again guys there's a lot of ways to do a bevel this is one of a few ways that i've done bevels i like this system this is starting to feel like a little bit of an, an older fashioned method and i've got some other ideas in mind but i do think this is a, an excellent system and i think if it was adapted and improved it could be yet again a, a large improvement. One thing I would consider doing in the future is spreading them apart to where a face mill would actually fit because, let me grab this bad boy, I've got this face mill that if, if I was spinning this whole thing or even a small face mill that would just make one pass out of it, it would be potentially a better finish and potentially not having chip clearing issues. I can't reach in there very well with a bigger tool, uh, it's just the way that the thing's set up and so this works pretty good for now, and I'm pretty happy with it. The results are what I'm looking for, but tool life sometimes can be a little bit of an issue. Sometimes chip clearing can be a bit of an issue. Magnets, I have a love-hate relationship with magnets, especially when you're machining where there's lots of chips, and uh, it, it does work though. And so this is a system I've used for the better part of this year and had good luck with. So I really appreciate you guys checking out my methods and following me today in the shop. and. Uh, yeah, stay tuned to the channel. Go ahead and subscribe, like, comment. If you have any other pointers, let me know. And stay tuned for another video. Thanks, guys.